So I, I think to all the speakers, whoever has the most knowledge about this, could you talk a little bit about insurance, specifically about anaerobic digesters and farm biogas? I can speak a little bit to that. Um, there was a there was a time where we were starting to see um, more frequency of having biogas um, biodigesters and so on on farms, um, typically running their own equipment. What we found, I think, we've seen the trend kind of move back away from that, um, and partly it's because I think you know, a number of our dairy farmers have said, you know, we're, we're dairy farmers. We're not engineers. We're not uh, people that work with this type of material. And so um, they found that outsourcing it tends to uh, work a little bit better for them. Uh, more recently, we've had some new farms that have been uh, building biodigesters immediately off the facility. So they might buy a piece of land from the farm owner or lease that land uh, directly from them and build a separate facility that's not part of the dairy. Um, the insurance carriers certainly like that a lot better. They like that separation of risk. Um, and, you know, there's a couple areas that, um, you know, just makes it a lot easier to when you separate that risk to get better rates on the insurance. Okay, thanks. And then tied in with that, um, and maybe Tom, this might be directed to you. Um, are there specific risk assessment tools out there and um, risk management evaluations for these facilities, much like you talked about for equipment and, and, uh, and so forth? Yeah, we, we have been working to get some risk assessment tools out there to get to the people. We've been working in conjunction with Michigan State on this as well for our biodigesters. And I know we are implementing that and move, trying to move it forward. Tess, do you have any other knowledge on that? And this is just more broad, but I think um, from a preventative and sort of proactive approach is making sure you're working with a reputable um, company to run your digester as well. I've heard farmers say that they're just getting like knocks on the door, like it, you know, all the time, like weekly, someone's saying, hey, do you want a digester? So uh, making sure you have the due diligence. So like Mike said, if that's the third party running it, um, those folks are going to generally be in charge of basically all the things and you give them the manure and they give you digestate in some form back. So just making sure that you have a good relationship and it's a good company that you're working with that has knowledge on how to safely operate um, the digester. Okay. Um, well, I don't see any, let me see, maybe one more question. Um, no, we already talked about that one. Um, to the audience, um, we've only had one question come in so far. So if you would like to quickly enter another one, we'll try to address any questions. Um, any additional thoughts that the speakers have while we're waiting for uh, pot potential additional questions to come in? I, I can add a little bit to what folks had uh, answered there. And one of them is just, and Tom, you spoke to this when you were, you're talking about, you know, uh, the maintenance side of things and having spare parts and all those different pieces is it's usually a combination of things that make the best risk management activities and plans. And so a lot of times people think, oh, I got that insurance. I don't need to worry about it anymore. But obviously you still want to take care of your stuff because you, your objective is not to collect on insurance. At least it shouldn't be. Um, mm -hmm. And same thing on some of these other aspects, uh, you know, test your time out, bringing in somebody to on the digester side that doesn't absolve you from doing your due diligence and making sure they know what they're doing and that you're paying attention to what they're doing to some level. So it's really important that folks realize that, you know, if you're using some of these tools, that doesn't absolve you from thinking through all the different other things you can do and be aware of on that. Um, so. Okay, so an additional question uh, regarding anaerobic digesters and our biogas facilities. Are there any specific insurance carriers that you are aware of that would provide coverage for anaerobic digesters or biogas facilities? I 
that's not something we do a lot with, so I, I really couldn't speak too much to that. I would want to say, though, if you're uh, going to be contracting with a third party that's going to operate the digester, that you have very good contracts in place, written contracts, and that both parties fully understand what at what level each party has responsibility for. Um, so, you know, if there's a spill, who's going to be responsible for that? At what point does that that transfer of the manure happen? If you're contracting with third party, at what point does that that transfer take place so that who's got responsibility for what portion of it? And I think that's an important point for any portion, even just general manure hauling as to what end is um, liability and and this may sound um, scary, but does it matter to whatever state agency? What what does your state agency care if there's an issue? Who who what do they want to know? And um, where do they think the liability ends and begins? I will say one thing that we've had on with our digesters. Um, so a company that was looking to implement one that we insure. Um, it was a brand new build, and they were they were building it out, and we. Um, did some uh, thermal imaging on the legs of the um, electrical portion of it, and it it was this was a brand new install, and one of the legs was improperly installed, and it was it was showing up in our thermal imaging. So that's another fine fine topic to think of is just because it's brand new doesn't mean it's spot on. So the thermal in imaging caught that before that leg was totally inop was operable and could have caused a big problem. So that's something to think of as well. Just because it's brand new, don't think that it it's right. It could have been installed and, in, you know, not correct. Whether it's old or new, it's it's very valuable to do that thermal in, imaging. Okay. Well, at this point, <clears throat> um, those are the only additional questions that have come in. Um, I'd like to thank today's speakers. I think this was a excellent uh, webinar and I think it's going to generate a lot of interest. I know I had uh, at least one comment came in from here in Washington State with our Department of Agriculture said that they were going to try to make sure this information got out to dairy producers in our state. So um, I think we can try to see that this gets pushed out around the U.S. So thanks again. Um, and as you close out today, please, please, please. Um, now I see one more question that came in. Um, but please, please, please answer the uh, the questionnaire that was sent out. Um, additional question, Mike, you had a very specific information for pre preventing fire at animal facilities. Any specific information for fire safety at biodigesters? So again, biodigesters seems to be the topic of the day. So <laughs> yeah, uh, quite frankly, I don't. Um, I say for the most part, uh, you know, our our clients have separated that risk out and have, you know, gone to, um, you know, separate separate uh, companies to manage those. I will say it, I would highly recommend that you're doing a really good assessment. And um, just for the sake of, of safety for everyone is to do regular testing with a uh, four gas meter to make sure that we're not having uh, you know, manure gases that might overcome someone or, you know, be methane that would have an explosive factor. So. And generally digesters are built in a way that again goes back to working to a company that has the proper engineers and folks on site is that it should be built in a way that is trying to mitigate those risks or has a plan in place for either flaring or other um, activity to happen to ensure that those risks are accounted for as well, um, at least on some of the digesters I have visited. Um, have a great weekend. Thanks again to the speakers and thanks for the audience for participating today. And uh, join us again next month, uh, mid-December for uh, yet another webinar in 2023.